Greetings to you. Bishop Vetter here, still your bishop, <laughs> coming to you. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about prayer. Uh, the biggest thing about prayer, huh? It's really a profession of faith that we believe that God is real, that it's a profession of that belief that we're dependent on Him, that we can have a relationship with Him. That is amazing that we believe as Christians, we believe we can have a personal relationship with the living God who doesn't need us at all, who's infinitely beyond us. Um, and He invites us into this relationship. When the disciples of Jesus say, Lord, teach us to pray, that's beautiful that Jesus didn't say, well, no, don't pray. I mean, I'm Almighty God and you're nothing. So what makes you think you can relate to me and, and me to you? doesn't say that at all. He says, when you pray, say, Our Father. Incredible that he tells them, when you pray, you pray the same way as I pray. Jesus is the one who called God Father. Right? He's the one who's his son eternally. And now he says, so when you're reunited with me as my disciples, through baptism. We'll get to baptism another time when I talk about what all happens there. Everything happens there. <laughs> it's incredible. Uh, but for another day. Incredible, though, that Jesus says, yeah, so when you pray, you pray the way I pray. You pray the way I pray. Uh, use the same words. Uh, they are Father. I often wonder, huh? It had to be beautiful that the Blessed Mother, when she was able to say the Our Father for the first time, right? Because Jesus taught all of us, including his mother, how to pray and how beautiful that must have been. Um, so having that time each day, it's important. Uh, it's like any relationship, huh? You and your spouse. If all you're going to do is relate once a month <laughs> or on Sundays for a little bit, that's not what a real relationship is, right? Some days you talk for hours and talk things through. Other days, you just have a little time. Maybe you're both busy at work, you're working overtime, whatever it might be. But you still have that little time, right? If you, if you know it's a crazy time at work, but you stop by and see your, your wife or your husband and you stick your head in and say, I'm on my way to work, just want to stop by, I'm gone. That means something. No, we need more than that, of course. But those little things mean a great deal in a relationship. That's what a relationship is, right? That I'm giving time. Uh, to each other, uh, that I'm giving myself to you, that, that uh, freely and completely as I can. And so in prayer, that's it, huh? Is having a little time. The devil says you don't have enough time. You don't have enough time, you only got three minutes today. What does that mean to God? Wait, tomorrow you'll have 15 minutes, then you can pray. Well, then tomorrow comes and now I only got seven minutes. And the devil gets his way again because he says, that's not enough time. And so we get tricked. It's enough time. St. Teresa of Avila said, one second of genuine prayer is a seed of love, a seed of faith that, that, that bears great fruit. Right? One second of genuine prayer. So, I just encourage all of us, huh? Start with that second, and then another, and then a minute, and then three, and you just keep crying out to Jesus. As a real person, talk to him like you talk to anyone. Just talk to him. And then listen. Listen. Just sit quietly. You get distracted, come back. Don't get too worried about distractions. Right? Don't judge those too quickly and don't judge the fruitfulness of your prayer. Of saying, well, that was good, and that, but this time of prayer wasn't good. So in our prayer, when we get distracted, when I notice it, I just gently Turn back and say, I got distracted. Here I am, Lord. I choose you. Jesus, I choose you. And if I do that a hundred times during a half hour of prayer, that's a hundred acts of love to God. It's wonderful if we can pray for a half hour with no distractions. That's one act of love. But a hundred times choosing Jesus over and over, that's a hundred acts of love. So we have to judge our prayer, in a sense, through the eyes of faith. And not through some utilitarian sort of way that we judge other things in our lives so often, but that we see that just that genuine love and that we talk to Him. 
we'll talk more about prayer too, uh, coming up with how to pray with scripture, the rosary, all sorts of stuff. But I just want to do this little introduction to get us encouraged again, uh, to stay with it. It's a real relationship, to just be personal, right? To be tender, uh, to be genuine. Tell them what's going on. We have to show up when we pray, not someone else. So if I show up and I got all sorts of stuff going on, that's who Jesus wants. He wants me, not some perfected me. So often, huh, we go into the chapel, it's tempting to leave myself outside because we think it's not worthy of going in there. It is. Jesus wants me in there, telling him what's going on in my life and listening to him. So let's stay at it, huh? To practice prayer as that real uh, relationship of love. God bless you.